Hi, I'm Libina. Hi, I'm Constantina. And we will be presenting on line broadening. And we'll be focusing on Doppler broadening. So, what is line spectral Libina? Well, firstly, an atom is surrounded by orbiting electrons, and these electrons can occupy different discrete energy levels. We can show this on a simplified energy level diagram, where E1 is the energy at level 1, and E2 is the energy at level 2. A photon with an energy that is equal to the difference between the two energy levels can be absorbed by an electron occupying energy level 1. This electron will then be excited to energy level 2. And because excited electrons have a tendency to um, de-excite to a lower energy level, it de-excites, giving off a photon of a specific frequency and energy. And this frequency and energy is related by this equation, E equals to h bar omega. We call this process spontaneous emission, and this gives rise to line spectra. Okay, so what is line broadening? Well, what we ideally expect is a single line to show the single frequency photon emission, and this would be its line spectra in the yellow bit here. Uh, but in reality, the difference between the energy difference between two energy levels is not fixed, and this is because of the splitting of energy levels into further sublevels, as we see here in this diagram. This means that photons of different energies can be absorbed between two specific energy levels, and in the same way, different photons, photon energies, can also be emitted via de excitation. And this is why we have this third graph. And here the range of photon frequencies that can be absorbed by the atom to induce a transition is displayed using a line shape function, and this gives the probability density of those photons. The area under this curve is given by this equation, which is equal to 1. Okay, and what causes line broadening? Well, one of the causes of line broadening is Doppler broadening. Remember learning about Doppler shift when you were younger? Doppler broadening applies almost the same principles. To refresh your memories, imagine you're standing on a footpath. You hear the ambulance coming towards you. The siren you hear has a high pitch. As the ambulance passes you, the siren has a low pitch. This video may help you visualize. So, what do you think is happening here, Constantina? It is because of Doppler shift. In this case, the sound waves are compressing as the ambulance travels towards you, so the frequency is high. But when it's traveling away from you, then it's exactly the opposite and the frequency is low. So, how is this related to Doppler broadening? Now think of the ambulance as the atom. The sound wave is the emitted light of different frequencies, and you are the person recording these frequencies. In the case of Doppler broadening, an atom or a lot of atoms moving with the same constant velocity and depending on the direction of the motion, actually this equation gives the recorded frequencies, where omega naught in this equation is the most probable angular frequency at the rest frame of the atom. The recorded frequencies are the constant velocities can be displayed here in this graph. Uh, when the atoms are moving at right angles to you, the only effect seen is the natural line broadening due to the variation of the of the difference between two specific energy levels. Imagine as um, as the atoms move towards you then you get positive velocity, and which gives rise to that peak. But when the atoms are moving away from you, then you get negative velocity, and so this peak is seen. So the overall shape, the overall shape, corresponds to that image. But there are many atoms moving in a random motion with different velocities. This gives rise to peaks at different distances to omega naught. 
So the overall graph is an envelope of all these peaks. Therefore, this is Doppler broadening. Um, we just have to acknowledge all the sources we used in this presentation. Here there are the sources. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.